Greetings and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy. So, uh, today, after we just, well not after, but like, uh, last time we finished the first game, which is just called Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, today, we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All, which is the second game in the trilogy. Episode 1, Lost Turnabout. Play the Lost Turnabout. Actually, not just yet. Uh, I'm going to take a second to check my volume settings in this game because it seems loud, but I'm not really sure. A couple people told me that it's quiet in the game and I'm loud, so I'm not sure what's going on with that, but be right back. Alright, so yeah. Um... If I turn it up any louder, I basically will either not be able to hear myself, or my voice will not be uh, able to be recorded properly. Because I, my volume, my voice volume, uh, because I'm not, you know, a voice actor, I can't control the pitch, tone, and volume of it perfectly. So whenever I talk, it's just kind of how I casually talk. So if it's quiet, that's because I just for some reason have it at that volume, and then if it's loud, it's because I suddenly got excited and there's nothing I can do about that. But anyways, also don't take that out of context. So play the Lost Turnabout, let's get this started. This is actually going to be one of... Dracula? Ugh. 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 How did I get into this mess? Frickin' Dracula's after me. That's far enough. You can't run forever, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ah, uh, Santa Claus! Wh what have I done? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But, I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. Time to get the band hammer! But I brought you Pepsi. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, this will be one of two games I'm gonna play now after uh, after finishing Okami HD. So what I'm gonna do is every other day we're gonna do Things Right Ace Attorney Defense for All or Justice for All Defense for All. I mean, I guess he is defending for all, except for the bad guy. Or whatever. And then the other game, uh, well, it'll upload tomorrow. And I'll just explain again that I'll be uploading for other games. So yeah. I also have a third game, but that's a more inappropriate game. So if you're logged in and over 18, you'll be able to find it. But regardless, uh, September 8th, 9.08 a.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number One. Ah, Dracula! Oh. What a nightmare! I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. Yeah, you're gonna have a nightmare when you frickin' play Dracula's theme song, which may or may not be trademark copyrighted and not sponsored. You really shouldn't be dozing off before a trial starts, anyways. Yeah, you really shouldn't. But I guess you know. If you had a long day yesterday, I guess it doesn't really matter. What I question is how you're able to do that in the court lobby. I'm pretty sure that's not allowed. That's considered loitering on their part. So you definitely would be uh, woken up if not maybe even thrown out of the courthouse for doing that. Ugh. Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it! Talk about a close call. I hate to do this, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. That's not my last name. It's Shiro. You should call me Mr. Shiro. 
Also, I'm a soldier, so if anything, you should call me Mr. Soldier. Which, no, don't do that. Stupid. A few minutes later, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number one. It just says a few minutes later. Like, yeah, we, we have no idea what happened. We don't know how a long time passed. Just a thing. Ugh. Three dots. Ouch. My head. It's throbbing. Like other parts of my body. Which is inappropriate. Why does it feel so foggy in here? That's because, uh, we opened the windows and the rain came in. What? Good morning! Yeah. Uh, good morning? What's wrong? You don't look so well. People are at their best, f uh, first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Uh, three dots. Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Especially with the fact that, uh, you keep hitting yours and you wear feathers in your cap. That's the most aggravating thing ever. Anyways. Roger that. Three dots. Three dots. Three more dots. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? For that maybe I had done something wrong. But what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? Three dots? Why do you keep saying three dots? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Zeg Shiro. Or I guess in your paws, all things considered. What? Life in my paws? I have paws? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. Not? Huh? Not guilty. Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed at me. Leave it to me, he said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, and also Zeg Shiro, came to save the day. Who's Phoenix? And just like that, I was moved by your tears. Step. Keep stepping myself. Really shouldn't. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What's this girl babbling on about? Also, why does she keep slapping herself? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... Heh, <laughs> duty. That... what? Are you an idiot? Three dots X come... uh, question mark? X come question mark? What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You make me kind of nervous. Oh, uh, sorry. Your, uh, outfit really annoys me because most officers don't wear feather. Anyways. Hm, I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? Mr. Shiro, how can you say that? After I just told you. What? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. I mean... I don't care. Well, that's rude. No, I mean, I, I didn't mean it like that. This is how a defense attorney treats his clients, sir. I can't believe this. No, shut up. Stupid. Child. It's just... When I think... Uh, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... I'm a dog. What? But, what? Yes, uh, I'm... Uh, three dots? Three more dots. I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? I mean, the screen did turn black. That could be the reason. Did I always have a dumb voice in my head? Yeah. The trial will begin shortly. 
Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you there, okay? Alright. Hmm. Guess I must have amnesia. How do you know that you have amnesia? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you've lost memory, you would think that you wouldn't know what amnesia means. Or for that matter, if you have it. That's a really odd question. Shut up, voice in my head. Ah. At least he knows that. Let's see what I can piece together. From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. No. You're a butler. Voice. Head. Shut it. Slap! And that girl. She keeps slapping herself. It's kind of weird. It's like she gets a weird, disgusting kink out of it. She's in a courtroom proceeding. That's very inappropriate. I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. <laughs> I love how, uh, The subconscious is... Really kicking hard on that one. It's like, oh, you absurdable, miserable fool, you. Ah, someone please. Tell me this is just a bad dream. I mean... Hmm. No? No, I'm not going to say it. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? I mean, you kind of did. So to speak. September 8th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Grab a grab 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 Court is in session for the trial of Maggie Braid. Or Byron. Beard? Birdie? Birdie. We're gonna say Birdie. Yeah, anyways. Where'd my soda? I need a new soda for the new beginning of this trial. Yeah, sorry, sir. We, uh, we don't have a uh, soda on hand at the moment. Frick all of you! The prosecution is ready, Santa. Three dots. What is it, Mr. Shiro? Have you the soda? Are you drinking it? Have you stolen my soda? I will put you in contempt of court for that. Um, no, no. Uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorney around here? I guess not. How oh, then? Are you ready? No. What happened if I said no? Just for the fun of it. Uh, what if I said no? Would that be alright? Of course it wouldn't! <laughs> you complete fool! <laughs> Why bother asking to begin with? Actually, you see, Santa, uh, my memory is kind of a... Uh, I don't care about your memory. I don't want to remember what you did last night. What? Never mind. The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must take this trial fair but swift. Even though we should technically, you know, be calling the higher ups or something. Well, ne never mind. It just doesn't matter. I believe, just as everyone else should believe in me, to give them presents. What? Ah, I mean, I, I believe I have told this before. I hope you're not telling me you forgot. Actually, I have. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Santa. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer, which means the FBI should have gotten involved. Or, you know, maybe an outside law enforcement, but who knows. I don't know. Anyways. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I... We weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution proved that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Oh, very well. Well, this seems like an open and shut case. I find the defendant 
guilty! Oh, well, anyway, we'll keep playing the game. Uh, Mr. Pate, please call your first witness. <laughs> I already got the guilty verdict. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> uh, anyways, it's been a while, Mr. Shiro. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Wait, why are you calling me a rookie? Last time we won, like, 15 trials. Some of them were against, like, dudes who had perfect records. How are you calling me a rookie? What a douchebag. Okay. And who are you again? The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Shiro. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. D-E-D -E -D dead. That's not how you spell that. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. You know what I'm saying? I'm the detective in charge of homicide down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know. Wait. Well, I guess if he's a witness, he still has to talk, but I was gonna say he shouldn't be allowed to work on any case with her involved. But if he's a witness... Well, no, because he's the detective of, you know, the crime scene at this point, which means, yeah, he shouldn't be here saying anything. He shouldn't be giving evidence or a statement. Someone else should be doing that. But whatever. You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. I'm not sure that's how you want to phrase that, but okay. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. Wait. Oh. Oh, I get it now. Oh. Oh, no. I, I, I need to go take a cold shower. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Hmm. Okay. Detective Gumshield, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. See, it happened at the park near headquarters. Expose A Park. Expose A? Okay. That's, uh... Really generic. Whatever. The victim was of the local cops, Justin Prince. You couldn't say local police? Really? Like, you do realize that cops is technically a derogative term for police officers, but whatever. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. See? Yeah. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. How does the ground beat you up? I mean, if he fell, I mean, yeah, he would have a concussion slash broken neck, depending on the angle of which he fell, but how does the fall actually beat you up, in that sense? Stop complaining! He's talking! He's supposed to be giving a statement! You can do your cross-examination later. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Oh yes, this autopsy report, correct? Can I see that? Because, uh, I kinda need to see that. Oh, I don't remember getting a copy. Um... Oh! It is here. So, uh, we got our attorney badge. Cool. We have the cell phone. Cool. We have Dustin's autopsy report. Cool. We have glasses. Not as cool. Let's see, time of death, 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Cause, broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you were to fall from any amount of height, regardless of whether or not it, you know, took your life, I'm pretty sure you would not have bruises. Or at least not be covered in bruises, as they describe. That sounds more like someone assaulted you and then threw you out the window. Which is definitely murder. Let's see. Found under the victim's body pieces of near 
nearsighted lenses were found nearby. Hmm, nearsighted, huh? I mean, it should be nearsighted corrections, but whatever. So glasses were found. And... Broken neck. Bruise. Yeah, everything just sounds very suspicious. I see everything is in order here. No, not really. Even the uh, estimated time of death is unusually well documented. I mean, it's... Hmm. Yeah, it is kind of like two the minute. I'm surprised it's not to the very second of when he died, but yeah, okay. The victim watched stop from the impact of the landing, sure, Shay. Mm. Well, I mean, you can't really say that that's when he died, but okay. The results of the autopsy confirmed the time of death, Shay. If I may, Santa, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Look at this photograph! Every time I get a copyright strike. That was really poor singing. Don't ever do that again. Especially not in that voice. Very well. The court accepts this into evidence. Crime photo number one. The victim fell from the walking path above. Added to the court records. Now then, I recall that yesterday's preliminary hearing. A very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Santa. Yes, Santa. Yes, I guess. Mr. Cheryl! Why did you take the music away? I didn't do that. But I mean, it was trademark copyrighted and not sponsored, so I mean, you never know. I might have to uh, turn it off anyways. Because reasons. YouTube. What? Never mind. There's no cameras allowed in this courtroom. Is your head on right today? I mean... It could be on left. That was a very terrible joke. There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Uh... Was there? Have you lost your mind? Uh, I mean... I do have amnesia. So that... You know... Technically speaking, is correct. I have lost my mind. That? Wow. Okay. Well, actually, I uh, just... It's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Three dots. Alright, sir. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, Maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Yeah, I already did. Court record? Actually, I do want to look at, uh, the crime photo. Um... That doesn't actually look like a very high drop. I think anybody could actually fall from that. Maybe not on their head, obviously. That would be very dangerous. But I'm pretty sure if you were to fall either backwards or forwards from that height, I don't think it would kill you. It would definitely give you a bruise. But it, it wouldn't be like all over your body, it would just be like in the impact zone. And you would definitely be able to either get up from it or at least be able to recover from it. So I'm thinking something's not right about that. Also, they said he had a watch. I don't see he has a watch. He has a wristband. I don't see the head of the watch, or the face of the watch, but the clock over on the left side says it's seven. Maybe even eight. I'm gonna assume that it's seven. So it's seven o'clock. It said that he was taken out at 628, which means he had been lying there for 30 minutes and no one found him. That's a little suspicious. Court record? Yep. Info about evidence and people involved in this case are all listed there, sir. 
You can look at the court record by pressing the R1 button. The R1 button? I don't have a controller. What are you talking about? Uh, it's a game, sir. We're in a game? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid or... Is that legal aid? League of Legends, instead. Trademark copyright and not sponsored. What? Never mind. I could totally be a legal aid instead. Uh, also, you said cop. Why didn't you say officer? Mr. Cheryl, don't question her words. Or her use of them. Yes, Santa? Court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. Sorry, Santa. Well, I guess I'd better check the court record. You would think that for someone who has amnesia and has admitted to having amnesia and doesn't know what he's doing here, would, you know, at least decide to tell, like, an officer or maybe even, you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the judge himself and be like, hey, um, I don't know who I am or what I'm doing here, so can we, like, take a recess or have somebody else take my place because, uh, I'm dumb? Huh. Well, whatever. Oh, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can find. Yeah, I found everything I need to find. Everything's crazy. What was again? The R1 button? Alright, Mr. Cheryl. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Uh, it was a police badge. <laughs> that wasn't very funny. Glasses. It's simple, Santa. Broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed his killer's glasses as she was being shoved, Santa. And he held onto them as he fell. Yeah. Three dots. Hey, why are you giving me that evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Uh. Yes. This is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear. I mean... Technically, they can prove that. They would have to get the... Her... I think her doctor's permission? They... Because... Uh, whoever prescribed her glasses would have to give permission for them to check out the prescription... That she were, you know, that she's required to wear for the glasses. All they would have to do is get that prescription, uh, compare the broken glasses because they can still look through the lenses. They can compare those broken glasses to the current glasses that she's wearing, and find that they're not a match. That they don't have the same uh, setting, whatever they have for glasses. And they would just immediately roll her out as the as the killer. But then again, she could still be suspicious in wearing old prescription lenses and be just faking it. Or she could have just not worn them. Or she could have had like an old uh, fake pair that she decided to wear at the time of the murder. So you never know. But they definitely could test to see the difference in the prescriptions of the lenses and find out whether or not the ones that she's currently wearing are the same as the ones that are broken and determine, at least from that point of view, that she should not be the one that owns those glasses because they would not work for her. Man, you figured out that, all that? We should be done with this game already. Case closed. Anyways, you sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on that same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. Really? You're just making this really hard for me. Coincidence, she says. Ugh. <laughs> Santa, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? Why didn't you present that earlier? Why are we going through this now? That's illegal evidence. 
and this evidence is very decisive. Bang in the gavel. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Decisive evidence. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, Santa. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. His date? Why would he be wearing his uniform if he's on a date? Unless he's trying to really show off that he's an officer. Like, that's some massive evil ego that you got going on there. Like, oof. I would not want an officer to be wearing their uniform as they're dating me. Because that would just... That would, one, be too intimidating, and, uh, two, I think that would just give off a really bad vibe with everyone around me, you know, considering my, uh, my person being a furring and all that, but whatever. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. What? I thought he died from the impact. How would he be able to write? There's so many confusing things going on in this case. No, he did not write that. I absolutely would call BS. I'm pretty sure everyone would call BS on that. That's a complete lie. There's no way that he would hit the ground and be considered dead at the time of impact and then just Ugh, oh, I'm dead. I better write the name of my killer as I'm dying and already dead. It's like, no. You hit the ground and went out instantly. You wouldn't be writing at that point. I'm sorry. That's just how it works. That's just how reality is. When you dead, you dead. You D-E-D. -E -D. I don't like saying it. But the narrator is really rambling. Yeah. But it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. I thought her name was, uh, Birdie. Is it Birdie Maggie? Huh. Weird. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. Heh <laughs> heh. But it is hard to say. <laughs> Because, uh, you clearly didn't say it. This is a picture of the writing, Santa. Oh. Why, this is... Yes, I can see her name is clearly written here. I can see now the rain is gone. What? Never mind. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Ah. This photograph does not make me laugh. I would kind of hope it wouldn't, but okay. Understood. The court accepts this into evidence. Crime photo 2, a photo of the area around the victim's hand. Uh, and also paw. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 I already told you, those classes aren't mine. How do you explain this dying message? Uh, it was faked? Hmm, touche. Three so, yeah. <laughs> It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. Gavelmang, you're clearly guilty. I will say it again. I find the defendant guilty. All right. Now give me my soda. I'm done here. Ah, we'll just continue with the game anyways. Wait, we're in a game? Ah, how did I not know this? Mr. Shero, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? Cross-examine! Cross-examine? Do not make me throw my gavel at you. This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. Get in their faces and do what? Spit on them? It's kind of dirty. Uh, probably shouldn't think about 
that. No, that, that's disgusting. I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a paw. Well, I guess in my case I would lend you a wing? Because I got a lot of feathers on me. Oh. That's weird. Prosecution's witness... Uh, yeah, I had to swallow spit there. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court. Which means they lie from time to time. Lie? People lie? Why didn't I know about this? Have I been lied to this whole time? Oh. My whole world is just turned upside down. You are the biggest idiot I have ever met. But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why, when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Gallivang! Mr. Cheryl, your cross-examination. Please, stop wasting time. Ugh, I'm thirsty. Yes, Santa. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. So, let's see, there's something even more incriminating in the glass I'm looking to buy. Uh, let's see, let's press. Just to, uh, see what he says. Um, about those glasses. Do you have any proof that those belong to my client? The lenses are for... Uh, yeah, see? The lenses are for nearsightedness and are almost the same strength as hers. Yeah, see? I mean, you say almost, but that's not definitive enough. Unless those glasses are old and they had weaker strength before her new ones because your sight doesn't necessarily get better over time, so to speak. Which is unfortunate. But yeah. So, unless those glasses are old, that's not right. Even the fam- uh, even the frames look kinda like the one she's wearing in her ID, pal. Hmm. What should I do now? Wait, her ID? I would kinda like to, uh, see that ID, but okay. Continue pressing. Stop the desk. Hold it. Point my finger. Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Do you have any more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Well, yeah. The dirt and sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. That's not right. The dirt and sand rubbed it out? That's... Um, your fingerprints are made out of oil. When, you know, when you put your finger, um, you put your print on something, the oil from your finger is what's left, and that's what creates the print left behind when you touch something. So... The dirt and sand that would get into it wouldn't rub it out. It would actually expose it because it would be absorbed by the oil. So you're dumb? So what are you saying, detective? That you're an idiot? Stop the desk. Is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients? Yeah, something like that, Shane. <laughs> What? I see. Mm. It seems as though the prosecution is freaking out. Stop freaking out. So there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing. I could totally feel it down in my guts. Gross. See, so during this day, the victim was pushed from the bench area. Uh, no, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. 
How did you determine that? He could have just tripped. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. Uh, the culprit's name? Actually, let's double check the time of death. 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Caught, broken neck, body was also covered in bruises. Okay, so it doesn't tell you whether it was instant or not. But I mean, a broken neck, you're most likely... You're, you, if you lived through that, you're probably going to live for like maybe a minute. And I don't think, you know, in your days and surprise and having, you know, life flash before your eyes moment that you're going to be writing down a name. That just, that seems like a whole lot of, a uh, whole lot of nonsense. Anyways, uh, the culprit's name? Yeah, see? I was surprised, too. I didn't want to believe it, but... What? Was the name that of my client? Let's see. <clears throat> I'm not getting anywhere. Slap that desk. Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal. But that's what it said, see? This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Wait a minute. Well, I would like to see my client's ID at this point. Because if he wrote it with two G's, and technically, you know, you can write it with one G as well. So if he wrote it with two G's, and her name is actually spelled with one G, that's already wrong. That's someone who doesn't know her. I mean, yeah, he was dating her, but that, you know, you, when you're dating someone, you should probably know their name. And definitely know how to spell it, because otherwise, uh, that's going to be awkward later on. Hmm, it's got a point. Pointed his finger. Hey, hold on. He does not have a point, and he did not point his finger. Huh? Don't hug me. I know the picture says Maggie, but... Now that she mentioned that something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like, huh? Better check the court record again. But I mean, there technically is no contradiction. Because, ah, here we go, there we go. That's what I wanted to look for. I wanted to look for these guys. So, Dustin Prince, uh, at least he's not uh, formally known as Prince, the symbol. Anyways, the victim and a policeman, it seems that he was dating the defendant, Maggie Birdie, and we already found out that uh, her name's not spelled right. She spells it M-A-G-G-E-Y, rather than M-A-G-G-I-E, but you can also spell it M-A-G-I-E. Or M A G G Y. Come on, man. You were absolutely dumb. Also, what in the frick? I just realized the gap in their age. The dude is 30. Wow. You know what? Good on him for trying, at least. Pain, did you come shoe? Man, what an ugly photo. Heh, <laughs> lacks. Uh, lacks presence? Presence? Weird. Uh, let's see. Charge of in initial investigations. Wow, he's only 31. He looks super old. That's sad. He, I would think he was like maybe 37, 40. Fifty-three. Yeah, that's about right. Alright, anyways. So we found the contradiction. Let's see. This piece of evidence plus hard to say blah blah blah. Okay. Clearly wrote Maggie. Yeah. 
Yeah, they did. So we can present the uh, the photo. Oh no, not the photo. Maggie herself. I object to that. Point my finger. Three dots. Three more dots. Even further, three dots. What is it? Three dots. Continue. What? What's come over me? Stop thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs. Finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. As if my finger were a sword. Bam! What a rush! Slept the desk! Point my finger again, Detective Gumshoe. You're talking to me, pal. Please state the defendant's name for me. Yeah, uh, objection. Uh, but what are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, uh, Mr. Shiro? Slap a desk. Point my finger. You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Uh, where, where is this ridiculous questioning coming from? Uh, uh, the defendant's name uh, is Maggie Birdie. Nope. It's Maggie Birdie. That's what I just said. Hmm. Touche. I think someone needs to check the court record. <laughs> uh, what's the court record? Uh, it says right here that it's uh, Maggie Birdie. Yeah. I mean... It doesn't... You can't really say the defendant's name and then expect everyone to realize, oh no, he spelled it wrong, even though it wasn't spelled wrong. And it's not gonna it's definitely not gonna be pronounced differently. It's Maggie. So, you know, you're all dumb. We're dumb! Looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? Where, where did this bird come from? Also, why do I, why is there a cat in the courtroom? I have no idea either, Santa. Yeah. Set the desk. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave the name Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled M-A-G-G-E-Y. Maggie. Put my finger. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. That was a redundant sentence. But okay. Oh! About that? I didn't even notice, eh? Uh, but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. <laughs> nah. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accu uh, accused of killing her lover. Subject death. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to have not known her name. True. Anyway. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne, how do you spell your name? Uh, what do you mean, Santa? Never mind. Yeah, yes, Santa. Uh, uh, yes. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Uh, yes, uh, I am quite certain, Santa. They were a well-known couple in the police force. That's, I think, legal. Well, not really illegal, but, you know, they can't really be in the same precinct working on the same jobs if they're dating. So, uh... OBJECTION! Anyways, this court finds the defendant guilty of being stupid. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Uh, yes, Santa. Yeah. Also, I frickin'... Yeah. Bruh! I hit my arm really 
badly on that. Ouch. Dustin and Maggie. Officer Prince and Officer Birdie had been going out for about half a year, say. Oh yeah, he would definitely know how to spell her name after that long. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. Whoa. Six months and you're already talking about marriage? Boy, you need to chill. You need to calm down. You need to slow your roll. Put the brakes on that. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, see? Santa? Yeah. Maggie, I mean, Officer Birdie, had gotten Officer Prince a present, see? There was something she had bought over two months ago. And I said no, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him, see? Oh, I see. What did you, what did you suggest for her to get? Was it an adult toy? No, Shanta, that's inappropriate, Shay. Those who sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. <laughs> mm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Shiro. Dustin and Meg. Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops, see? Officer Birdie was a rookie at the time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off, see? That's kind of weird. They got close, I take it. Yeah, that's pretty much what it means when they say they hit it off, see? Actually, I was supposed to go too, but, uh, couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. Well, that's messed up. You have to put in a deposit for the trip? Come on. You already work with the police force. Why do you... Oh, that... Come on. That, no. That's messed up. If only I'd gone on that trip, see? What is it? Were you thinking you could have dated a young rookie yourself? <laughs> uh, 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 no. No, no, not, uh, nothing. Santa, really. Yeah, anyways, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, see. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. Marriage? But wasn't the victim eight years older than her? What? You saying a guy's gotta marry someone the same age as himself, pal? I mean, it's implied. Because, you know, it would be kind of awkward if someone... Let's say that she just started the academy. And let's say she just came out of high school to, you know, begin said academy. Most people leave high school around 17 or 18 years old. That being said, if these, you know, experienced officers are going to the training camp or the training facility, whatever, to talk to the new recruits, the rookies, who are probably less than a year into their training, that would mean that someone of age 30 is well beyond the dating age of someone who's 18. So, it's kind of awkward. And it's also more or less a violation of the rules because you can't really be dating your superior slash uh, subordinate due to favoritism. You would have to be put in completely different precincts, completely different uh, fields of work. So yeah, that, that doesn't really work, no matter how you splice it. And it would just be super awkward. I mean, just think about it. A guy who's 30 dating an 18-year-old, and this is actually how they mess with it. It's nothing that I personally think about, it's just, you know, what everybody else thinks about. If you look at it this way, if you were to scale his 30-year age down to when he became an adult, that puts the 18-year-old at 6. Yeah, that's uh, not something we really want to be dealing with. So, anyways... No, that's not what I meant at all. Detective Gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know? That... That, that doesn't help the situation, Birdie. Shut up. Uh, I think this fella has a way to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal. 
birthday, huh? Uh, the day of the incident. You mean September 6th? Yeah, sure. The victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. Ah, I remember when I was a young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly time. <laughs> I remember back in the day. <laughs> Anyways, that's great, Santa. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. Uh, three dots. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because uh, uh, I'm her boss, see? And I've got to watch out for my subordinates, see? Yeah, that's not creepy at all. But even what she was going to give, uh, you know... But even what she was going to give as a present, isn't that going a bit too far? Hey, pal, watch what you say, see? I know everything that happened under me. So hmm. Phrasing? There's so much, so much that scratches there. Okay, I really don't need to know that much. Yeah, Jackson, uh, Mr. Shiro, <laughs> please refrain from uh, badgering the witness. I agree. No more badgers. We only allow dogs in this courtroom. And some cats. But only some. Just the dogs. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant, that should not be the point of discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a second. Why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. Arrested for what? Exposing the truth about your emotions? I think the good detective is about done here. Uh, uh, over two months ago? Yep. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see? She's a very considerate woman, pal. I mean... I would hope so, if she's dating. You gotta be considerate to your partner. And, you know, that goes both ways. But well, I'm just saying. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. So he is Prince the Symbol. Formerly known as Prince. Weird. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? I mean... Got a Michael Jack in it some way. What? Those are two completely different people. Completely different artists. Yeah, what about it? Anyways. Yeah, uh, well, uh, uh, actually, uh, Santa, the, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. Hmm. I love me American pastimes. Ah. I love doing the, the stick ball in the yard. What? Never mind. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan, see? Well, I mean, everyone in Japan is a huge baseball fan. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, this is Merka. Uh, press further. Baseball club, huh? Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah, she. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Well, I mean, I don't see why not. If she learned that he was a huge baseball fan, you know, two months ago, I would assume that, or let's say even three months ago, that she would, a month later, be like, okay, I saved up some money to buy this glove, and now I'm going to wait at the right moment to give it to him. But that's weird, because... Hang on. Profiles, did it say... No, it doesn't say. Um... I'm trying to recall, did they say that it was September 6th was the defendant's birthday? Because if that's the case, that's not right. Why would she give him a glove on her birthday? I'll have to, you know, figure that out later. Yeah, nothing like that, pal. And what is it like? It's like rubber, Shay. Leather. Leather, rubber. Rubbery leather. Huh? 
Huh? She ordered it. It was custom made, see? Custom made? The glove was custom made? Custom made. Okay. Yep, that's what she said. And that's what I said. That's what they said. That's what they all said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. Yeah, even Santa said it, see? Everyone said it was custom made, see? Yeah, I get you. Uh, Santa, I really don't see how this glove is related to this case. Yes, it would seem that there is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Cheryl? Do you think this glove is really relevant to this case? Yes. Because I want to know whether it fits the right hand or the left hand. If it fits the right hand, that means he's left-handed. And that means he shouldn't be writing someone's name with his right hand. So, uh, got him! I don't know where this will lead me, but... It's not the desk! Of course it is relevant. Actually, you know what, let's check to see the profiles real quick. Dang it, it didn't say that he was left-handed. Point my finger! That glove is the key to this whole case! Yes! Bluffing to the max! Now this is Mrs. Shiro I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. Was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Mm, pressing key. Feels like I've done this before. Yeah, several hundred times in the last game. Wait, this is a game voice in my head? Just frickin' read your lines. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Gavel bang. Very well. You are that convinced. Then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought that glove with me today, see? And? Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to the court. Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Yep, that's a right-handed glove, which means he's left-handed. Anyway, this is it, see, Santa? Yeah. It's, uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Baseball glove, a birthday present from Maggie to the victim. It was custom made. Okay, so his birthday was September 6th. Uh, baseball glove added to the court record. Option Prince really liked the color yellow, Shay. I mean, I do too, but not all yellow. Like, I like yellow accent. If it's all yellow as the base color, that's kind of too much color. It's too bright. And that's why you had to special order it? Yep, that's right. That, and one other reason. Which I'm not gonna tell you because, uh, plot convenience. Gavel bang! No more plot convenience. I think this court has heard enough. The court finds the defendant guilty. Okay, anyways. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Santa. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Santa. This is Gumshoe. Please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir, sir. Oh my gosh. This is taking forever. This is one heck of an intro for, you know, the first, uh, first part of the second game. We first looked into the handwriting, see, and the paw writing. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's paw writing. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail, see. And there, there were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground, see? From this, we can confirm uh, that the victim wrote his name with his right paw, see? Yeah, we're immediately going to stop that right there. We're going to, uh... We're going to, uh, object to that because he's clearly left pawed. Mm. Yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Cheryl, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Santa. 
into the handwriting. Um, actually, I want to know what you looked into. But can you really determine paw writing based on a sample with the, uh, written in sand? <laughs> this is why amateurs and our amateurs say we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. Mm, I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Santa. So, what was the result of this investigation? Uh, we didn't really get an answer. Thanks. Uh, they couldn't confirm that it was his paw writing. Check the victim's pointer finger. I don't know if there was sand trapped under his fingernail. Or else he scratches. Uh, we can confirm the victim wrote his name with his right paw. I am going to object to that. Objection! Point my finger. Detective Gumshoe. Take a look at this. Is that a photograph, Shay? No. Good, because I didn't want to really laugh. That's a glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um... Never really thought about it, but, uh, see, yeah, see, yeah, yeah, see. They're really yellow. <laughs> that's about it, see. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh. Sorry. There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. It's for a bright paw. Therefore, the man who's going to wield it is left pod. This glove is made for a left pod person. Left pod? Yeah, Shane. Why? You're absolutely left. I mean, right. This glove is made to be worn on the right paw. That is why it had to be custom made. I had never seen a bright yellow left pod glove for sale, have you? Well, no, no, uh, say, yeah. So, detective, which paw did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that would, uh, uh, yeah, that's what I thought. That it was his, wait a second. Don't forget that the victim was left pawed. Ah! Yeah, see? Yeah! Yeah, objection! Uh, that's, uh, I mean, uh, objection. Overruled. You're being stupid. I will put coal in your stocking. Mr. Cheryl, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. Except the desk. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. Pointing my finger. I will draw it with my finger, sir. That... what? A left pod person could not have written a message with his right pod. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Rubber, 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 rubber. Ah, gavel bang! Order! Order! I would like to order a pizza. And some soda. I really am thirsty. When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. And that means Maggie is a... No! No, it's not possible! It's a pain! Uh, yes, yes, Santa. The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. Which is unfortunate because I said that they were guilty like five different times. I'm very disappointed in you. Shouldn't you be disappointed in yourself? No! I will put the blame on you. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! Alright, you did it, Mr. Cheryl. Phew. Phew. I feel like I can breathe again. Gavelbank, it seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did fine. You did a fine. You did job fine. Did again once, Cheryl. Did you. What? 
You did a fine job once again, Mr. Shiro. Me, Santa? Ah, well, thank you, sir. See? You got, uh, complimented by Santa Claus. Again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. You joking? I'm more than ready to retire. Double bank. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Birdie. Attention! No, not yet. Bruh. I mean, uh, please give me a few more minutes, Santa. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Page? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? We're Robert Robert, but I said what? Robert. Government. What did the this well, and what did this witness witness? The moment of the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? We're Robert Robert, but I said what the heck? We're Robert Robert. Order! Order in the court! I have not received my pizza. I believe a recess is in order. I really do need that pizza. Afterwards, we will hear from this new witness. Man, he really loves pizza. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. Gavel bang. To be continued. Wow, what an interesting way to start off the first episode of the second game. Okay, so. I guess that will be the end of uh, today's session. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I guess tomorrow we'll uh, continue the court proceeding. And end this tutorial once and for all. And figure out what's going on with uh, the uh, the feathery girl and the turtle man that she was dating. I don't know why I'm considering him a turtle man, but I'm gonna I'm just gonna deal with it. But other than that, which is weird because he has a paw. Hmm. He's a hybrid turtle. Turtle fox? Huh. Anyways, stay safe, take care, and we'll see you in the next session.